All right, folks. This is location number two. There's still that competition on. It's the last day of the boat competition today. So, the river's pretty much, well, they're going to be plagued the guys in boats, pike fishing. So, this is the second spot I visited. The first spot was down at the airfield. I got all the way to the bottom of the airfield and then I found out that the actual shoreline is flooded so so there's no chance of fishing it. I'm not standing in two foot of water all day. That and the guy had cattle in the field so it's not right to annoy the cattle. So this looks like it boys and girls. I think I have 3% of my channel is watched by females. But you're not watching it for the fishing are you girls? You're watching it for this beard. <laughs> this is actually a lot deeper than I thought. You can see those bollards there that come in and they go right the way around to the end there. Usually you see all of them and these bollards are they're quite meaty bollards. They're like, uh, well I'll just show you one here. They're a good distance thick. I mean, that is one of them. It's a beast. So you can just about see the the loops of them going around. Normally those are exposed. But uh, there's the line of the start of the, the launch. And <laughs> so the water is very, very high at the minute. And the old van made it up and down through muddy hills and fields and Got me to where I need to be. I'll treat her to a wash. So let's get the gear out and let's get some fishing done. Well, here we are. This is part two of yesterday's session and already not a blank. You can thank you, magic chicken bones. <laughs> it's only a little jack. I literally just cast the bait out and I felt it hit the bottom and I think the jack took it on the drop. But because it's the first pike of the year, I'm gonna show it to you. Just purely because it's the first pike of 2019 20 season. Just give me two minutes now, I'll get it out in the retainer. Hey, try not to fall over on my ass. Calm yourself down, boy. Calm yourself down. So there you go. The first pike of 2019-20. And we'll just put them in back in here. You can see why I like this sling so much. This cradle even. He can do a bit of thrashing and it doesn't do him any harm. He's a wee bit lively because he's been in the, the retainer here for a couple of minutes. We'll just pop him back. Stop swimming into the damn thing, you idiot. Well, hey! Always good to get off the mark. See when I spool up a rail? I get one season out of that spool, you know, normally if I'm lucky I get one season. Then I backwind it. Now, so that you've got it when you've, if you've put the line that you've used the previous year or the previous session to the bottom of the reel. Now, you've found that line has a bit of memory and if you run your fingers along it you can feel that it's got a bit of memory. 
You'd also find that once you've wound it on, you'll wind it on under tension. You put a lot of line twist in. One of these little jobs is a little lead bit, but as you can see, there's grooves cut on it. And the grooves are cut so that it spins the opposite way. That's taking out all the kink out of all the line twist out of your line even. So all you have to do is chuck it about for, you know, six or seven times and it's good. These here, I think Gardner makes them. They're cheap, really good. Still only the one pike, but it's not a blank, so we're doing well. I think I might wire some oil into my eel. I've had the odd wee shower or rain there. I don't intend to fish all day. I'm going to pack up about five, take a slow drive home. But I'm just uh, happy for catching small fish. Gets the, gets the season started, so to speak. Right. Let's get this in and let's get some oil into it. And then I'll do the same with the rainbow trout. Just out in front of me, there's a rocky outcrop. In the summertime, it's about five feet under the water, but with this added water in the system, it's probably about six feet. In the summertime, it holds uh, perch and roach. So, but on the back side of it, it goes into deeper water. So, that, this technically is where the bream overwinter. There's a deep channel, tend to overwinter about here, so let's get this eel in, maybe do something with the mackerel and uh, see if we can wrinkle out one before I have to go home. Fishing a standard running pat noster with about 24 inches of rig tubing. That way, if there's anything on the ground, like a zebra mussel. In fact, if you run your finger along the lead link, you can see that it is getting nipped. So I don't mind sacrificing the lead link. The wire trace will be fine, it'll be okay. But I want the line that's touching the bottom to be protected. This is why I use the rig tubing. I get questions about why I use rig tubing. Turn you off. I'm doing stuff for you now in as well. See when you're injecting your bits? Don't be tempted to do it like that there. Because you'll go through the bit and into your hand. These are all lessons I have learned through experience because I've done it to myself. It's not fun. shallow here. It's only about 10 feet deep. I can just feel the lead get pulled across the bottom there when I'm winding that in so I know that I'm clear of any sort of snags. You find when the wind's ripping up this way any dead trees that fall into it tend to get caught up on big crops like this so you don't want to hook into a tree.
and I'm going to move my mackerel and put it further out there. Currently it's sitting on this side of the bay. I don't think it's doing too much so I'm going to reposition it as well. Must have been in grass because I'm pulling it through dead grass. So this one's going to get stuck with some salmon oil just for a change. A mackerel that smells of salmon. A wee bit strange, but. There you go, two bits cast, one more to go. I'm, you have no idea how happy I am that I've caught a jack. <laughs> I was beginning to think there's going to be a hex on the whole season. Yes, very shallow, very, very shallow. We did. Uh, very, very shallow, not. Not really somewhere that I'd be. I was just curious. It's it's uh it's, it's, it's hard enough to get to as well. Like it's actually four Blomsley tractors. Aye. That have to lay in them. Yeah. Smallest pike of the, the I've ever nice seen. Fish. You could almost use that wee bugger as bait. <laughs> oh well. Away it goes like a shot. <laughs> So it didn't matter putting on a big bit or a small bit, it doesn't matter. You can have a big lump of a bit on and catch the smallest little pike. Yeah. What do you use for your bait? That was a rainbow trout. Okay. Fair one should probably strike, the fish should probably lost. Oh, okay. So I'd probably go back and have a have a er, now. Well, maybe not that pike, but the next one coming behind it will. You just 
cut off the tail, it stops it spinning when you bring it back in. So. Oh well, number. Can't beat catching a wee pike like that. It'd be nice if they were a bit bigger. guys that would I've seen all sorts of different shenanigans with the competition anglers I've seen guys tether pike into the weeds and I've seen guys you know when you start putting money into it people yep. don't uh, uh, the rules change I honestly might be called into question at times you know seeing a lot of anglers being dishonest oh those are just uh, little feet there's a hole in the middle with a screw just screws on there they're just they're handy enough, I mean, the wooden jetties, I mean, the, the other things would be you'd use the pod like that there. But no, no, a GoPro's just on a, on, a, on a tripod there, it's just on a... This is so it can be moved and turned around and... I, did have a, I do have an attachment for the landing net, where it kind of clips onto the landing net, so if you're weighing it or you're netting the fish, it... Uh, You can kind of see what you're netting, but it's uh, well, it's not there, all to do. Is there a competition on at the minute? Uh, is, it, is that already coarse fish or no, pike? Oh, pike fish. Oh, yeah. It's on. It's on all uh, all this weekend. Friday was the bank day. Saturday and Sunday is the boat last of the boats. But I can tend to avoid. I go fishing to get away from people. Yeah. <sighs> Big trout, small pike. Ah, rain, rain, boring. I've retired to the brawley, just to kind of get out of the rain. I had to do something. I couldn't go home yesterday. It felt like half a man. Going home and no fish. No. Just felt wrong. I had to get out today, do a bit of a confidence booster. So I've went and caught a couple of jack pike. Yes, I know. Nothing that's going to... Uh, you're not going to get them printed and put on your wall. But it starts the season. The momentum can only carry forward. I'm going to sit in here while the rain kind of hopefully fizzles itself out. I'm going to finish my brew. And then I'm going to call it a day. There's not been an awful lot of footage today because it's just been a quick few hours on the bank really. Uh, yeah, it's important to carry a first aid kit in your car or your van or your backpack 
Because could I get that little nick in my thumb to stop bleeding? You swear I was on like a warfarin or something like that there, something to kind of make the blood thin. <sighs> Somebody sent me a video the other day on YouTube of the new Ridge Monkey thing. It looks like a square pot and a griddle pan. I love Ridge Monkey stuff. Their toaster thing that you can detach, the XL the toaster one, that you can detach the handles and make yourself a cracking toasty sandwich. That's awesome. I have one of them in the bag. In the, the bag? I have one of them in the, in the bag here, the cooking bag. It's an essential bit of my fishing equipment now, if I'm going to cook something. But steamers? Come on, guys. We're anglers. We don't eat steamed greens and quinoa. You know, okay, push the boat out with a griddle pan and make yourself a steak, but... Really? A steamer? Eventually we're going to get to the point where they will slap fishing on anything and people will buy it. Such is the world, eh? Anyway. Thanks to everyone who has recently subscribed to my channel. You guys are amazing. I'm going to keep pushing forward with the content like this. We're going to be doing more pike fishing as it's the winter. And I'm thoroughly looking forward to this season. I just needed that little bit of a confidence boost today catching some little jack pike. <sighs> Let's get into the swing of things properly, eh? Cheers, guys. Tight lines. Well, there you have it. Well, the season has officially got off the mark. This is a good thing. I wouldn't class myself as uh, superstitious. I just prefer to go out and catch fish. This whole going out and not catching fish just feels weird. It makes you kind of want to go and lock yourself in a room and whip yourself with a stick. Makes you some sort of failure as a man, a poor hunter-gatherer. <laughs> Although the only hunter-gathering I'll be doing tonight will be when the wife comes home from her work and I go to the uh, local takeaway and get some chips. Never let it be said that I'm not a hunter-gatherer. I don't provide for my woman folk. Say women folk. It's only one before I have the feminists, you know, give it out. He's objectifying the women's. He's treating them like their property. Uh, nope. Although they weren't the biggest pike, they were bike, and the second one that you've seen on camera, I, I probably would have used that as a bait, just at the right sort of time of year. Remember I did the series on big pike, uh, going for big baits? Well, sometimes it doesn't always work, but big baits work. Anyway, troops, until the next time, tight lines.